listening to the Day by Day podcast for the third week of February 2016. Welcome to the Day by Day podcast with me, Siobhan. This week, we're talking about love and flirting in the digital age, plus a month-long celebration. Now let's get right to it. First up this week is Valentine's Day. Valentine's is celebrated every year on February 14th, so this year it falls on Sunday. It's celebrated in many countries around the world, and it's a day where people celebrate love, most typically romantic love. It is marked by giving gifts to the ones you love, especially your significant other. Couples go on dates while gifts of flowers, chocolates, and jewelry are commonly exchanged. Symbols of Valentine's Day include hearts, doves, and Cupid. There are varying accounts as to the origination of Valentine's Day. Most include Christian saints with the name Valentinus. One popular account tells of St. Valentine of Rome, who was imprisoned for performing weddings for soldiers who were forbidden to marry. But no one knows for sure which one St. Valentine is responsible for the holiday. It may be a culmination of several different Valentines in history who kind of culminated into one Valentine that we've put together as this day of love. The celebration of Valentine's Day as a romantic holiday began in the Middle Ages when the idea of courtly love increased. Courtly love emphasizes nobility and chivalry. This type of love was originally created as a literary fiction, but the idea of loving nobly was embraced as an enriching practice. The earliest known writing of associating Valentine's Day with romantic love dates all the way back to the year 1382 in the Parliament of Foulet, I'm guessing, it's French, written by Geoffrey Chaucer. And it says, For this was on St. Valentine's Day, when every bird cometh here to choose his mate. And he was talking about the day of February 14th, a year after the king had become engaged. The earliest description of February 14th as an annual celebration of love appears in the Charter of the Court of Love in 1400. It describes lavish festivities to be attended by several members of the royal court. Festivities included a feast, amorous love song and poetry competitions, jousting and dancing though it has not been determined that these celebrations actually took place it's as though the invitations went out but no one rsvp'd the earliest surviving valentine is a 15th century poem written in french by charles duke of orleans to his wife and roughly translated it states that he is sick of love and he doesn't mean love sick the earliest known surviving valentines written in english are from the Paston Letters, written in 1477 by Marjorie Bruce to her future husband, John Paston, where she refers to him as my right well-beloved Valentine. The well-known poem often recited today, Roses are Red, Violets are Blue, is from a collection of nursery rhymes in Gammer Girton's Garland in 1784. And this says... The rose is red, the violet's blue, the honey's sweet, and so are you. Thou art my love, and I am thine. I drew thee to my valentine. The lot was cast, and then I drew, and fortune said it should be you. I like that. It's very nice. This extended version is reminiscent of Song of Solomon 2.16, where it states, My beloved is mine, and I am his. And I guess the whole book of Song of Solomon could be considered a valentine or a love poem. During the 18th century, Valentine's Day was marked by couples expressing their love for each other by presenting flowers, candy, and handmade greeting cards known as Valentines. Today, handwritten Valentine's cards have been replaced with mass-produced greeting cards, which is why some refer to Valentine's Day as a Hallmark holiday, referring to the company Hallmark, which creates all the greeting cards. Okay, so here's some statistics about Valentine's Day. According to the Retail Advertising and Marketing Association, over $13 billion is spent for Valentine's Day. 85% of Valentine's Day cards are purchased by women, 
and 73% of flowers purchased for Valentine's Day are purchased by men. 14% of women send themselves flowers on Valentine's Day. It is estimated that 11,000 children are conceived on Valentine's Day. Candy and cards are the number one gifts given, and 50 3% of women say they would end their relationship if they didn't receive something from their significant other on Valentine's Day. So, show your lady some love. For those of you not in a relationship, you can still participate in International Flirting Week. This week is dedicated to celebrating the art of flirting and the role it plays in developing and maintaining relationships. It's not clear who, when, or how this observance began, but I say go for it. Be a part of Flirting Week. In the 1560s, the term flirt referred to a woman of loose behavior. That has changed greatly over the last 400 plus years, and flirts are not necessarily loose women. While flirting is used in meeting and getting to know a potential love interest, it also plays a part in an ongoing and lasting relationship. The dictionary defines flirting as acting amorously without serious intentions or a play at love. So there are at least six reasons to flirt, and they are for sex, with the end goal of ending up in bed together, <laughs> good-natured fun, exploring or trying to see what it would be like to be in a relationship with a particular person, relational, trying to increase the intimacy of a relationship, esteem to increase one's self-esteem and instrumental when someone is trying to get something besides sex from the other person most flirting attempts are just for playful fun but in a relationship men and women agree that it is an important part of a lasting relationship it's not the most attractive people who receive the most attention it's those who are most effective at flirting during the victorian era Young women were taught how to flirt in order to attract a suitor. They learned how to use fans, parasols, and other accessories as a prop. In fact, there was an entire flirting language created with these accessories. For instance, tossing a handkerchief over one's shoulder indicated she wanted a certain gentleman to follow her. And smoothing out one's gloves indicated she wanted to be with that gentleman. Flirting in the 21st century isn't limited to in-person encounters. Now you can use email, Twitter, texting, Skype, <laughs> all sorts of digital and online mediums make it super easy and common to get to know people. It's also less intimidating for some. Though it's said to be an effective flirter, you have to have good eye contact. So I guess crossing the digital line uh, eliminates the eye contact and you have to be really good with your words. Studies show that people who flirt more have more white blood cells, which boosts your immunity and your overall health. So if you're a bit hesitant to flirt, consider doing it just for your health. Next up on the calendar this week is President's Day in the U.S. It is also celebrated as Washington's birthday, who was the first president of the United States. His actual birthday was February 22nd, 1732. Some refer to it as Washington and Lincoln Day, Lincoln's birthday being February 12th. President's Day is an annual remembrance of all the presidents, and it falls on the third Monday in February, so this year it is February 15th. The federal holiday originally honoring George Washington was created by an act of Congress in 1879 for government offices in Washington, and it expanded in 1885 to include all federal offices. As the first federal holiday to honor an American president, the holiday was celebrated on February 22nd, which, as I stated, was Washington's actual birthday. On January 1st, 1971, the federal holiday was moved to the third Monday in February by the Uniform Monday Holiday Act. Allowing the holiday to fall on the third Monday of February, the holiday will never actually fall on February 22nd. The latest it could be observed is February 21st. Since it is a federal holiday, non-essential federal government offices are closed, as well as banks and post offices. Most schools are closed, and some take the entire week off, but tend to refer to it as winter break. Until the late 1980s, many businesses would close for the day. 
However, now it is marked by businesses having big sales. One popular sale is mattresses, as well as electronics and cars. So if you have this Monday off and you're looking for something to do, chances are you can find a good sale to spend your dollars, which coincidentally bears the likeness of Washington. See how it all connects? Up next this week is Digital Learning Day. Digital Learning Day falls on February 17th, so this year it will be Wednesday. In 2012, the Alliance for Excellent Education had its first nationwide Digital Learning Day. The day is intended to celebrate productive uses of digital learning throughout the nation's schools and the teachers who have supported and provided innovative digital options for their students. This year, official Digital Learning Day events will be live-streamed on their website with various topics throughout the day. Topics include digital equity and access, leadership, teacher preparation, college and career readiness, transforming teaching through technology, and a look ahead to the future. Other organizations throughout the world have their own celebrations. I found some on the Digital Learning Day website that include a group from India that plan to organize a competition for teachers to share technology-based activities in the classroom. And a school district in rural Alaska are encouraging teachers to highlight how technology connects them to the world. I think that February in rural Alaska would feel very isolated, so technology can help them connect to the world. The organization behind Digital Learning Day is the Alliance for Excellent Education. It is a Washington, D.C.-based national policy and advocacy organization dedicated to ensuring that all students, particularly those who are underserved, graduate from high school ready for success in college work and citizenship. This is according to their website. The Alliance works to encourage the development and implementation of federal and national policies that support effective high school reform and increase student achievement and attainment. Their slogan is, every child a graduate, every child prepared for life. You can get more info about the Alliance for Excellent Education on their website, all the number 4 ed.org. And for more information or to get involved or to see different activities that are happening on Digital Learning Day, visit digitallearningday.org. The month of February is Black History Month. Since we're smack in the middle of February, this is a great time to look into what Black History Month is all about. So Black History Month is celebrated in the U.S. and Canada every February. It's also celebrated in the U.K. in October. Prior to Black History Month, the U.S. celebrated Negro History Week beginning in 1926. This week-long observance was celebrated the second week of February as it coincided with Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass's birthdays, which black communities had celebrated already since the late 19th century. The primary focus of this initial celebration was to encourage the coordinated teaching of the history of American blacks in the nation's public schools. Negro History Week helped spur the creation of black history clubs. Eventually, Black History Week grew into Black History Month, with the first celebration at Kent State in February 1970. In 1976, as part of the U.S. Bicentennial, Black History Month was officially recognized by the U.S. government. The House of Commons in Canada began to officially recognize February as Black History Month in 1995, and in 2008, the Senate officially recognized February as Black History Month in Canada. Countless African-American men and women have left their marks on all parts of American history. Some of these men and women include Booker T. Washington, who was born into slavery in 1856 and rose to become a skilled orator, educator, and civil rights leader. Maya Angelou, who was a world-renowned poet and civil rights activist. And Hank Aaron, who was one of the greatest Major League Baseball players of all time, and he held the record for career home runs for 33 years. You can learn more about black history by reading C.G. Woodson's article from the April 1926 edition of Journal of Negro History. There are countless other books and articles available about black history by just searching the internet or go to your local library. That's all I've got for this week. Thanks for listening. Remember to make each day count. 